So hopefully you just watched the videos when we were talking about feeding chickens organic feed. And now I wanna to talk to you about how this will be published in a paper. That will help you learn how to read papers and understand what they did. So if I were to publish this paper, I would take my alternative statement and put it right in the paper and say, feeding chickens organic feed is associated with an increase in weight, comma, and then I would put this information here. So let's break down what's here. First, we would put the T to tell people we use the T statistic. So if that said Z there, then you would know that somebody used the Z statistic, but we are gonna use the T. Now, unfortunately, you don't know whether it was a one sample T or an independent sample T or a dependent sample T, but hopefully the story um, told you or they told you in their um, the other part of the paper. But we now know that we're looking at a T. We also know that their degrees of freedom was 24. So we now can figure they had 25 chickens or people in their study and uh, 25 minus one is 24. They, we do this so that if you wanted to look up the critical value yourself, you could see if they did the, the right conclusions. Now, um, as a grad student, I used to look everybody's rejection region up and make sure they were allowed to reject the null and I never really found an error, but it is helpful to give people plenty of information. And so now we know that this is the degrees of freedom they use to look up their rejection region. Now notice that here is the number we calculated. So we call it obtained or observed or the calculated. This is the actual math. So the T value that we calculated was 2.72. We don't put the critical value here because that's established in um, journal or tables. We could look that up if we needed to, but I wouldn't know the 2.72 unless you gave it to me. So that's your calculated T value. And then here's where they tell us what alpha was used to um, define the rejection region. Now, the old days we used to say that the probability of being in this uh, rejection region was 0.05 or less than 0.05, but nowadays people realize that you can read that table a little closer. You could say it could be 0.01, it could have been 0.001, and with computers, they're so accurate. Computers can tell you the lowest level you can set alpha where you still reject the null. So nowadays when you see publications, instead of saying the p-value or the probability of being in the rejection region is less than 0.05, they now say the probability equals, and then they put the smallest number you could have set alpha to, and the computers will tell you exactly, maybe it was 0.04999, right? So they tell you exactly how small you could have set alpha to so that you can be a little bit more informative to the people who are reading your paper and so it's far more impressive to see a p-value of 0.001 than it would be to see a p-value of 0.02. All right, so this is what would end up being at the end of the sentence that reported your findings. And so when you see this in papers moving forward, you now know they did a t-test, they had 24 degrees of freedom, they set their alpha to 0.05, and here's what they calculated the test statistic to be for step four.